Okay, viewers, here we are in the Stania 8F in TSW2. Viewer Mert asked about these elements of the HUD down here. And I'm just going to run you through stuff pretty quickly. So first up, this one is the blower. So the blower pulls a force draft through the file by ejecting steam through the stack. And I'll show you what I mean more in a moment. Now, the other one is the dampers. So down here, we've got two dampers. Lady, get my, your shovel out of my way. So we can open the front damper up and we can open the back damper up. And the automatic fireman does, of course, just shut them again because that's life. Now, the other thing I want to look at today is the water glass. So if we just zoom in on that, you can just barely see the water level. There it is there, just across there, about where my uh, little dot is. And I want to show you a little bit about that as well. So let's pop outside our locomotive because I want you to see this view because you're going to need to remember it just a little bit. Promise it won't be hard. Up this end, we've got our stack and our smoke box. We've got our cylinders and the blast pipe coming from the cylinders that goes back to the stack. This part is the water space and that continues across the top of the firebox and right through all this area here. This area is the firebox, which extends into the cab. And the actual firebox part is about this much. And on top of it is a water space. Okay, got that? Very good. Let's go off to a little bit of a slideshow. Everyone loves a slideshow, right? Well, anyway, remember that view we were looking at before? So we've got our smoke box on our left. And the smoke goes out through the stack. We have got our firebox on the right. Underneath the firebox, there's an ash pan. The fire bed or fire grate has got the burning coal sitting on top of it. Um, if it's an oil burner, this is where the oil burners would be. So not that much different. The big black thing is called the arch. And that's usually made of brick. It could be made of steel, but it's usually made of brick, fireproof brick. Uh, we've got the firebox door, which is where you put new more coal in. And it has another purpose. We'll get to that in a moment. On top of the firebox is a thing called the crown. And that's a, it's just the steel at the top of the box. And in that, there's probably one or more fusible plugs. If the fire is burning and there's no water above the firebox, the crown sheet will melt. The idea of the fusible plugs is it gives the fireman a last chance indicator that something really bad is happening. And because they're getting a whole lot of steam and probably a bit of water rushing into the firebox. A lot of people say it'll put the fire out. Mm, reality probably not what it might be more likely to do is throw the fire at you but anyway it gives you an idea that there's something bad going on now we have our fire tubes that join the firebox through to the smoke box and they travel through the water space now here we show that there's four but in reality if we look in this cross section there's a lot more and there's usually a lot more than that i'm just keeping this simple the blue represents the water level so as the water rises, it has less room for steam. That incidentally pushes the steam pressure up because it's got less room to expand. And the sight glass, remember that thing we looked at in the cab and the water level was roughly in the middle? Well, that is reflecting the water level that's in the boiler above the firebox. So the bottom of your sight glass is usually a little bit higher than your crown sheet so that you know that you're getting close. So even if you're totally empty in the glass, you've probably still got a little bit left on top of the crown. The water level is the same as the water in the boiler. So if the boiler water goes up, the water level will go up in the glass as well. And remember, from a locomotive perspective, the front is always towards the stack. The rear is always towards the uh, firebox end of the locomotive. So hot combustion gases follow this red path through the system. So they come through the firebox, around the arch, through the tubes, and up through the stack. And they're following the natural draft. So left by itself, that air moves this way. But that doesn't move very quickly and it doesn't make for a bright fire. It'd be a very dull fire and it wouldn't be very good at heating up the water. So what do we need? Well, we need air to make the fire burn well. And that comes from two sources. And they're called primary air and secondary air. The primary air comes in via the dampers underneath the fire grate and comes through the fire bed, so through the burning coals. And there's normally a front damper 
and a rear damper. The secondary air comes in through the firebox door or vents in that door or you might have little notches that you can open the door up a little bit. Now the air from both sources combines to give the best possible combustion of the gases. Remember it's not the coal itself that's burning, it's the volatile gases it gives off because it's hot. So they burn in this space here underneath the arch. Ideally you want all of your combustion to happen here because it's a protected area and you only want the hot exhaust gases to go this way. You may see flames occasionally from a steam engine and that's because the burning's happening out here. Not ideal. Wasting heat. Now, when you're not moving or you're lightly steaming, natural draft simply isn't enough. So you remember these arrows were quite small before and you need force draft and that's where the blower comes in. So the blower is usually a cone and if, as you open the valve in the cab, it ejects steam more and more out through the stack. And that ends up creating a vacuum here. So it sucks air through the fire, through the tubes and out through the stack. And it basically makes this fire burn more ferociously, more violently, if you like, because it's getting a whole lot more air. And it makes a very bright, very hot fire. And that's what you need when you're boil trying to boil a lot of water. Well, that's about it for the explanation. I hope that's been relatively straightforward. I've tried to keep it simple, but please ask questions if you need to. Alrighty. Well, thanks very much to, much to viewer Mert for the question. See you later.